The final countdown has begun. The motor racing circus is in town. The drivers, the cars and the crowds. It's the world's biggest motorsport event, the 24 hours of Le Mans. But before the race, 50 top sports car teams face an intense final fortnight of testing, practice and qualifying. And for one small team from England, it's time to take on motor racing's giants. Over the last six months, small, privately owned British team Creation Autosports have been working flat out to prepare their 500 horsepower DBA prototype for Le Mans. They've done the hard graft in the wind tunnel, on the suspension rig, on the dyno, and on the test track. Now, with the race just two weeks away, they'll be able to run their car on the Le Mans circuit for the very first time. They have just one day's testing and four short qualifying sessions to prepare the car, team and drivers for the race. They will need to find the pace to compete with the favourites and the reliability to survive the ultimate 24-hour challenge. Creation's Mike Jankowski is on his way to join his team at Le Mans. Two years of hard work and two million pounds of his own money have transformed this man from historic race car enthusiast to the proud owner of one of Britain's leading sports car teams. It's quite strange having been to Le Mans as an uh, enthusiast and here we are doing it as a top team with a chance. But it's so nerve-wracking because this is the big one. The build-up, the costs, everything is just huge. Here we are in the big time. The city of Le Mans in northwest France has hosted the world's greatest endurance race since 1923. It's been the scene of some of the worst accidents in motor racing history and many of the greatest triumphs. It's become a mecca for sports car fans from all over the world. Head south out of town and you're driving on the main straight of one of the longest, fastest racetracks in the world. The infamous Molzan Strait. I think if things go right it will be a, a, a very, very good hard race. But I'll tell you, you know, I know Bix doesn't have any nails to bite anymore. That's because Bix, team manager Ian Bickerton, has been going without sleep for weeks in pursuit of his lifelong dream. My dad took me to Le Mans for my 12th birthday. It's an awfully special place to go to. It's got that atmosphere about it. To actually go to Le Mans now and just stand in the pit lane, it nearly makes you cry. It's such a special place. Bick's mission these last few weeks has been to turn around a terrible run of unreliability for Creation's race car. After failing, once again, to finish their most recent race at Spa, Bix is now trying to radically rebuild the car with much stronger, more reliable components. On Creation's small budget, he has to spend very wisely. But with 30 years motorsport experience, Bix knows where to find the best component builders in the business. This is um, a new suspension block for the car. It's a little bit heavier than what, we're, what we normally race, but it's for Le Mans, it's a safety issue. Bix is replacing crucial load-bearing components with tougher materials, sacrificing a little speed for a lot more reliability. The main issue with the components that we have is they're made out of aluminium. But aluminium is quite soft. We can make it out of a, a stiff, uh, heavy material, steel, whatever. But there's a weight issue. For the moment, we're going to make it stiffer and heavier. It'll last 24 hours. And uh, you can have these done in time, yeah? Yeah, no problem. Next stop is Stable Fabrications, who are producing new, beefier versions of key components of the suspension system. It's going to cost him, but Bix is having new uprights carved from solid chunks of steel. That there is now that. This is the way it's up on the car, and when it hits a bump, it's doing this. So all the loads are going here. Well, what you really want is thicker webs here. 
because all the shock is into this part of the barrel, not this part of the barrel. So if you look at the, the barrels that we designed and made, these three webs here, or four webs, are, are, are thicker. Everything's hand-built the old-fashioned way by expert machinists to maximise both accuracy and reliability. Bix order is going to take 500 man-hours to produce. Well, that's how it would look on the car. Everything's got to be in the right place. It's a safety-critical component. It's got to be right, it's got to be accurate, and it's, and it's got to work. It's a bold move for a small team like Creation to rebuild so much of their car. And they won't find out if all of Bix's hard work and Mike's hard-earned cash will pay off until they get to Le Mans. These magnificent grandstands towering over the track will soon be home to a quarter of a million spectators. And around the back, 50 trucks are crammed into the team paddock. For the next two weeks, until the race begins, this is where the action's at. An army of over a thousand team bosses, engineers, mechanics, tire men and drivers will be working flat out to prepare for the race. And Mike's boys are already hard at it. Don't worry, gents, I'm here now. I can save the day. Creation are prepping their car for tomorrow's official test day and their first chance to run the car on the track. Bix and his race engineer, Ian Smith, are anxious to find out how the new components will affect its performance. It's a delicate car. It's, that's, that's its, that's its um, Achilles heel. To come to Le Mans, the car's put on maybe 10 kilograms, and we're quite prepared to, to carry that weight, um, knowing that the, the, the reason for it is, to, is reliability. Tomorrow, Creation will find out just how much that weight gain will slow them down. Components aren't the only new thing for test day. Creation's regular drivers, Nick Minassian and Jamie Campbell-Walter, are joined by a third driver, Le Mans veteran and former winner, Andy Wallace. I desperately, desperately want to win this race again because uh, anybody can say, well, you were just lucky you won it that one year. If you win it twice, it can't be luck, can it? As they recce the track for tomorrow's test, Andy has 16 years of experience here to share with his new teammates. Yeah, don't bother after Ted Rouge, don't bother going left. Legendary landmarks from 80 years of Le Mans history rush by Creation's drivers. The Porsche Curves, the Dunlop Chicane, Tert Rouge, and on to the open roads. For two thirds of the modern 13 kilometer circuit, the drivers must tackle the tougher challenge of racing on closed off public roads. Here the surface can be extremely unpredictable and worth a bit of closer reconnaissance. See, that's the problem. Look yeah. how sharp that is. Little Porsche goes off the road, brings this on the track, we run over it, kaboom. Early on Sunday morning, the public roads are shut down. It's test day. The teams have just this one day to tune their cars set up to the demands of the track. That means finding the best possible compromise between fast lap times and reliability. It's a huge engineering challenge to run a delicate racing car non-stop for 24 hours. In the Creation Garage, Chief Mechanic Andy Trim has been preparing for a tough day. Making sure his thousands of spare parts are exactly where he and his team of mechanics can find them. You never know what you might need, so uh, get it all in there. Get it full up with everything you possibly think you could use. Round the back here, nuts and bolts, all the consumables. All sorted so you can grab them in a hurry. All the gearbox spares, car spares, headlights, tail lights, suspension bits, floor wires, wheel nuts, fuel pumps, everything pretty well, just so you can grab it to hand. Since Creation have never run their car at Le Mans before, they've really got their work cut out to get up to speed. But they're hoping that all of Andy Wallace's experience here will help them find a good setup. OK, Andy, um, I'd like to do five laps total. That's three time laps. OK, get yourself settled in. Andy's driven dozens of different types of car here, so he should have the confidence to get straight onto the pace and start giving the team useful feedback. In the garage, the engineers can follow every movement of his hands and feet using the live data from the car. That was a 48, Andy, 48. Dude. It's a slow start. Andy's having problems with porpoising, 
the nose of the car bumping against the road. What have you got then, Andy? The porpoise is absolutely out of order for, for 24 hours. You go nuts. It bangs the ground really hard. You can smell burning. Great qualifying car. It's going to be a great car, don't get me wrong. But there's no way you can drive this car fast, accurately, for 24 hours. Smithy calls for changes to the suspension, softening the rear springs. And it's back out for another try. And he wants the car softened even more. Not really what Smithy wants to hear. Drivers like cars set up soft. They feel good to them, but you also find that they don't go around the track so quick. When a car's too soft, it rolls more and, and it doesn't exploit the best grip from the tyre. Yes, mate, that's loud and clear. Nick Minassian is one driver who would always prefer to have a quick car rather than a comfortable car. He's getting very concerned about Andy's changes. The thing is, you know the way it is. The quicker you go, the more you stable the car. Yeah. Nick's theory is that Andy needs to push the car harder rather than change it. Andy disagrees. The porpoise has changed the frequency. It's now a higher frequency, so I thought that was slightly worse, mate. So, even more changes. It's getting better. If we could shed some more front, I'd be happy. I hope Nick would too. But it just, it's just beginning to be more of a proper car now. Andy may like the car now, but will Jamie Campbell Walter even recognise it? Jamie's times are slow. But Andy has yet more suggestions. We can lose a little more front. Yeah. I was thinking of a, a rubber so that it just was went rising right only in the course of With only three hours of the test to go, Creation's best lap time is only 11th fastest. And Mike has had enough. We have a little bit of pressure to get us further up the grid. Such a poor performance relative to their rivals can't be blamed on those 10 kilos of new components. Creation will need a radical change of strategy to catch up with the top teams, especially Pescarola. Veteran Le Mans champion Henri Pescarolo's two-car team have been setting the pace all day. With four long, fast straights, this circuit really suits the Pescarolo car, which has more power but less downforce than other top teams. Now the drivers are feeling the heat of being the favourites. Cette année, particulièrement, on a quand même énormément de pression. C'est vraiment la première année où l'équipe à Henri Pescarolo est montrée du doigt en disant cette équipe peut gagner le Mans et devrait gagner le Mans. But it's a new car and reliability is a worry. No such concern for the two teams running the Audi R8, which has dominated Le Mans for the last five years. The new regulations have slightly handicapped the straight line speed of the Audi R8 this year. But it's a safe bet that at least one of these cars, from the French Orica team or the American champion team, is going to be fighting for victory after 24 hours. Thanks to its legendary reliability, big budgets and large, well-organized teams. I would say that we probably have 50, 45 to 50 personnel that are here this weekend to run the two cars. Champion has so many people and so many spare parts, they seem to have taken over more than their fair share of the paddock. But today, Champion is having its fair share of problems. The supposedly bulletproof Audi R8 is having a wobble. One car has already had a gearbox problem, and now their second is in bits as well. It's a glimmer of hope for the rest of the field. Creation are hoping that with the right setup, they can outpace the Audis. Nick sent out on fresh tyres to go for some flying laps and restore team pride. Nick's nearly 10 seconds faster than Andy's laps earlier in the day. And he's surprisingly happy with the car. Everything feels good. I mean, the speed is pretty good, actually. Can this really be the soft, easy-to-drive car that Andy's been developing with the team all day? Or has Bix been a bit crafty? It was just a bit too much of an animal for him and it was a bit of a shock to the system. So it took him a while to get his head around it. We made some adjustments to put it more like how he wanted it. And yeah, he thought it was great. Yeah, turning's better, it doesn't oversteer so much. And then slowly, slowly brought it back to where it was, which was quite a crafty little plan, really. Pescarolo have a very different driver problem. They're in danger of being a man short for the race. Sebastian Loeb flies in from Turkey with just an hour to go before the end of the test. He's the World Rally Champion. He's just won a gruelling three-day event. But he's a rookie here at Le Mans. 
and if you haven't raced here before, you have to complete 10 laps on the test day to be eligible to drive. The entire French press corps want a photo of their hero, but Loeb needs to get on track. Loeb has had very little time in the new Pescarolo car before today. His first laps are cautious and too slow. He's told to put his foot down if he wants to qualify for the race. With time running out, he crosses the line just seconds before the chequered flag for the end of the session. Sebastian Loeb is in the race. And with their other drivers setting the fastest laps today, Pescarolo have proved themselves the team to beat in next week's qualifying sessions. The Audi R8 has finally been toppled, at least in terms of speed. I think we were surprised by a couple of cars as to how quick they were. But if you look at the rest of the field, uh, from third on down, everything's very close, very consistent. All the teams have passed their first test, but the next is just a few days away. In one of Le Mans' great traditions, the teams, the cars and their drivers must now face the fans and the scrutineers in the centre of town. The cars are closely inspected, weighed and measured to make sure they conform to a very detailed set of technical regulations. They must pass this test to take part in qualifying, which starts tomorrow, to determine starting positions for the race on Saturday. Thank you. Once through, the teams line up to be immortalised on film. The first day of qualifying brings heavy rain. Whatever the conditions, over the next two evenings, the track will open for four two-hour sessions. At midnight on Thursday, each car's fastest single lap time will determine its position on the starting grid for the race. And one of these drivers will claim a place in the record books with the pole position fastest lap. Some cars are better suited to a wet track than others, and Creations is one of those cars. After disappointing times on the test day, all three Creation drivers are on the pace. Even Andy likes the car. Absolutely brilliant, to be honest. Our car in the rain is fantastic. Really, really nice to drive. The second session each day is run in darkness. Good practice for the race. With the track now drying, Nick Minassion goes out on a fresh set of tyres, determined to send a message to Creation's rivals. His best lap is the third fastest of the day. It's a good first day. Everybody worked well. Guys did a good job. Nick did a fantastic job in the end. It puts Creation ahead of the Audis, but still not quick enough to match the Pescarolos. So Hilayari sets the fastest lap of the day. But it's not all good news for Pescarolo. Their second car has a gearbox failure and it's going to be a race against time to get it repaired for tomorrow. On the second day of qualifying, the rain is gone and the crowds are growing. A dry track will make yesterday's times redundant. It's all to play for today. At Creation, it's already been a busy day. This morning they had a special delivery, their race engine. It's a special version of their Judd V8, designed to last just a little over 24 hours. Like almost all racing components, maximum performance is achieved by designing things to last no longer than required. Creation have made a strategic decision to install the engine today. It means they can thoroughly check the installation of the engine with still two days before the race. But it's going to severely restrict how many laps they can run in qualifying today. If we did the 24 hour race and at 23 and a half hours the engine blows up and we ran for two hours tonight and we could only run for an hour and a half instead, you'd feel like a real, real idiot. After a good run yesterday, Bix is putting the need for reliability ahead of the battle for pole position. Creation aren't the only ones who have been hard at work. Pescarolo have had to fly in spare gearbox parts from England. And they're ready for qualifying with just minutes to spare. Out on the dry track, everybody's times are immediately 25 seconds faster than in the wet yesterday. 
creation allow each of their drivers just three laps at the wheel to feel out the new engine. Both Nick and Jamie are happy. Oh, that's actually quite, quite nice and balanced, I think. It's got a bit of understeer and a bit of oversteer in places. But Andy doesn't agree. The, the biggest problem is the vibration. I mean, it vibrates like a And it's engine speed related, not wheel speed related. Yeah, sure. And he's worried that he can feel a vibration, also known as resonance, that indicates a problem with the new engine. And now, Jamie's getting worried too. He's worried about it from a reliability point of view, because if that resonance is doing that to us, what's it doing to everything else? You know, things like alternator, or brackets, bolts, anything, gearbox. Close inspection of the engine reveals no obvious problems. Smithy faces a tough decision. If they change the engine again, they'll miss the rest of qualifying. We've looked at the data quite closely. There's no evidence that the engine um, has any less power than the previous engine, so um, there's not really any justification for changing the engine for, for another one. Smithy decides to trust the instincts of his regular drivers and get on with it. Most teams have three or four attempts at a fastest lap, but to preserve the new engine, Creation's Nick Minassian will get just one attempt to go for pole. It's up to Smithy to choose the perfect moment. An ideal combination of a warm track, cooler air and a clear circuit with as few other cars as possible to get in the way. Nick's now equipped with a special set of qualifying tyres. The super soft rubber compound provides extra grip, but it doesn't last long. Really, you go one lap, the lap, your, your lap, you, you go out and you do your lap straight away. It's, it's just like the luck of the draw of it. You have to, um, to be lucky, then you're not going to get any traffic. Smithy decides that the start of the final session is the perfect moment, but he's not the only one. OK, mate, start your engine, please. Pole position will almost certainly be won in the next half an hour. But with so many of the 50 cars out on track, every driver will be desperately hoping for a clear lap without slower cars getting in the way. Nick must use every scrap of his skill to master both the challenges of the track and the moving obstacles of the slower cars. His flying lap starts well, but near the end, he's badly blocked. He could try again but his soft qualifying tyres have already given their best. Next time of 3 minutes 38.9 seconds puts Creation 7th on the grid. He split the Audis, two ahead of him and one behind. But it's Emmanuel Collard, lapping almost a full second quicker than any other driver, whose name will go down in the record book, taking pole position for Pescarola. Back at creation, spirits are high. Ah, that was good, mate, that was good. Everybody went quicker, you went quicker. Um, you finished P7. It's quite respectable, really. There's only uh, 1.2 seconds quicker would have uh, placed us P3. It's obvious that our car is equally on pace with uh, any of the front-running cars. For creation, it's mission accomplished. Not only are they on the pace, but they've now completed their first 126 laps, over 1,700 kilometers at Le Mans, without any reliability problems. Finally, this small private team from England are looking like a team that could actually finish the 24 hours of Le Mans and challenge for glory on race day.